This week, the Imperium come back swinging. A Revenant goes down to a Dread Bomb in Delve. IHubs create more fights. Brave mess up and test pace for it. And the Imperium introduces to the Doom Clock. Hello, I'm Frost, and welcome to another EVE Online War update. And this week is the 23rd of November, 2020. Welcome back. So as I said during the introduction to this video, the Imperium comes back swinging and this will become very apparent as we move through the events of the week, especially as we come towards the end of the week. So first up, if you remember from the last episode, uh, I'll come into my little box. Uh, we've got Dotland in front of us, as always. Thank you, Wallari, for uh, creating Dotland. Please support him if you can. Uh, there is a donate button up at the top. Right, moving on. So T5Z, this uh, constellation right here. So. A keep star was anchored by Pappy, and it is one one jump away from 1DQ1-A, which is the subcap staging for the Imperium. Now, as a consequence of that, um, everything had to be moved across, and everyone's kind of settled in, and mistakes were made. And uh, if you remember last week, a Titan walked to a gate in DTAC W uh, by accident because he was multi-boxing, and we lost a Titan. And the thing is, is this war is very, very different uh, from other wars in the sense that this is far from over. Uh, previously in kind of wars, when someone dropped a keep star right on the doorstep of your of your enemy, you know, when they were invading, it was kind of the, the enemy sort of capitulated and went, OK, yeah, you're here now. There's nothing we can do about it. We're just going to move out. We're going to evac. This is not the case this time round. You know, um, the Imperium have made it very clear they're going to fight this all the way to the end. So this makes this war very, very different and very interesting because we are kind of moving into unknown territory. So uh, I said that uh, Imperium would capitalize on mistakes and this was apparent almost from day one. So um, what was happening is that uh, people were undocking from T5Z uh, to get on a Titan uh, and the normal approach to doing this, the quick way to doing it is rather than burning to the Titan and potentially bumping it, uh, you would warp to a nearby structure and then walk back to the Titan. But there were no nearby structures anchored uh, and so therefore people were warping off to the Fortizar uh, which was closer to the 1DQ gate and um, the Imperium were taking great advantage of that and was just basically taking people out trying to get on the Titan by bubbling them on the Fortizar. So um, yeah, so that was the beginning of kind of mistakes being made. And this happened quite a lot. Uh, then uh, we kind of moved on. So on Tuesday, uh, I want to bring to your attention some patch notes. So we had some new patch notes for Tuesday. That's Tuesday the 24th. And uh, if we actually go down these, to these patch notes, we'll see down the bottom here, uh, right down the bottom, you've got technical. So improve the stability of damage over time, super weapons, something more re reliable, applying their full damage under heavy, heavy server loads. What this relates to is when uh, Pappy were trying to anchor their keep stars in NPC Delve, uh, Goons uh, laid a trap uh, for the super fleet of um, Pappy. And uh, so Pappy jumped in and the, the Imperium fired all of their bosons at these supers and something didn't go right. Some, for some reason it didn't work. And uh, this is a clear reflection of this, that it's an acknowledgement by CCP that there was an issue, that it should have worked, and lots of supers should have died, but they didn't. So uh, now CCP say it's fixed, and the question will be is, uh, will the Imperium try again? Uh, and uh, who's going to be the first to, to uh, test it out? So uh, not the kind of thing you can test on a test server. You have to actually be in full battle and decide, yeah, we're going to give this a go. So it's going to be interesting to see if, um, if this trap is potentially laid out again, although obviously the element of surprise has gone there and uh, potentially Pappy will not put themselves in that situation again. But anyway, interesting uh, little patch note addition there. So on Wednesday the 25th, there was a little bit of goss, a little bit of uh, sort of spin. And I will just bring it to your attention just so that everyone's noted that I knew about it. Uh, there was a corporation called the Dysfunctionals and the Dysfunctionals were a member of Goon Swarm and they were booted on the 25th. And I'm not gonna go into all of the spin. Uh, apparently it involved them selling some supers potentially to the enemy. Uh, this is allegedly. Uh, and they got kicked and that is that. And also they had a Fortizar, which apparently got to uh, handed over to PL in Y2 Anno, which is uh, down in the, in the entrance to Fountain. That's all I'm gonna say. These are the only facts that I know is that Dysfunctional is no longer a member of Goons 
and uh, there was a forces art that was handed over. And I'm going to leave it there because it is just spin and there are only a small alliance of 100 people and uh, there's only like sort of a dozen active members. So it's, in the big picture of things, it's not really that relevant. But on Thursday the 26th, uh, I'm just checking my notes here. This is why you always see me looking down by the way, because I, I make sure that I keep some notes. Uh, we had um, a Fortizar in T5Z that belonged to Goonswarm that uh, was on its final timer. Uh, there was a little bit of an engagement on there, but it was only at the beginning and then they kind of got blobbed, they got blue balled and, and they pulled away. So the, the structures in T5Z are slowly being cleared out uh, one by one, just to leave the, the Pappy Keepstar in there and uh, no uh, enemy uh, structures in place. But more importantly, uh, there was a constellation battle uh, going on for Entosis for iHubs. And it was actually in Quirious, and it is this constellation down here. So let me just bring up my constellation map. There we go. So it is the cream colored one in the bottom left hand corner down here. So ETAC VK, ATAC Y, etc. Now, this was important because this was the last one uh, of the constellations that hadn't had its iHubs flipped. And if you remember from my previous uh, videos, if you've watched them, then you will know all about the strategic index. And you will know that once an iHub is flipped, even if it's put back, you have to wait 35 days to achieve, to achieve strategic level three so that you can put in jump bridges and Sinogen. So an iHub is only useful in a time of war once it is 35 days old. It has been in place 35 days without being in any interruptions whatsoever. And so this was the last constellation outside of this pocket. Uh, let me go into constellation maps again. Uh, this light pink one in the left hand corner here, which is the staging system constellation, the subcap staging system, and the systems known as uh, Helm's Deep, which is this light purple one on the top left, this light green one, the dark green one, and the yellow one right here. So all of these areas up here, and the area down here, these are the ones that have kind of been really fortified. These are the siege systems of the Imperium. So every other system in Delve uh, has been successfully in Tosis. And there were some battles over this uh, one in Quirius, and I've got a battle report here. And uh, you can see that it didn't work out in, um, in Imperium's favor. They lost uh, 23, point, 23 billion ISK versus uh, 8 billion ISK, ISK lost to uh, Northern Coalition. Uh, they primarily relied on Munins uh, and the uh, Papi, that's the Imperium by the way, the Imperium brought Munins and then uh, the Co and Papi brought their usual kind of mix of uh, Feroxes, uh, PL brought Feroxes, uh, Legion of Death brought Serbs, uh, <laughs> normally you see the Serbs on the Imperium side uh, and then we had, uh, what else did we have? Yeah, so we had some Eagles obviously, so Pandemic Horde and uh, NC, uh, NC Dot really, really liked their, their Eagles. So they, were, they brought these in, in force, as you can see. So it was just sheer, I mean, as you can see, I'm still scrolling down. In fact, Northern NC Dot brought some units. I thought they brought Eagles. So you could see that uh, they brought uh, huge amounts and they basically blobbed um, Goon Swarm in this particular case. They wanted these, uh, these iHubs to be flipped once and for all and they threw everything at it on Thursday the 26th and managed to obviously uh, do quite a bit of damage to um, to the Imperium. And most of the losses were to the Munins. There was a Harpy fleet trying to harass the uh, the Entosis boats, but uh, that didn't work out. So you guys, that's the battle report uh, for Thursday the 26th. Now, uh, that was the evening of Thursday the 26th. On the morning of Friday 27th, so this is kind of late US time zone. This happened at 5 a.m. UTC. This was the big news a, um, uh, let me bring it up, uh, find the right battle report, here we go. A Revenant went down. So if you're not familiar, a Revenant is a very, very rare super carrier. It's not something you can buy a blueprint on the market for. And these things are worth a fortune. In, in this case, as you can see on the kill board here, it was worth 179 billion. And so this uh, Revenant, along with a Leviathan, um, right here, belonging to Sashi Romanenko, uh, both died um, in literally in a matter of minutes. Now, how did this happen? How do you lose a Revenant? It was actually lost on the T5Z Keepstar. 
And uh, I was very, very, very thankfully, someone actually sent me some footage. This is on the tail end of it, so you can just see like some nice pictures of some some dead dreads and, and some lots of stuff on Doctor on the Keepstar with loads of bubbles everywhere and a saber flying around. But anyway, what happened is that Good Dickens in The Revenant decided to uh, do things on his own, uh, which is not a good idea. And this is coming back to the complacency that this this whole keep star in T5Z, everyone thought that it's a done deal. And you know, you're still one staging away from your opponent. And and one of the things that Goonswarm are very, very good at is flash forming. Uh, because they're literally one alliance, one very big alliance, when they do a flash form, they can do it very, very effectively. Uh, this is one of the weaknesses on the Pappy side. The Pappy side has lots of smaller uh, coalitions all trying to work together. And so this is why the Leviathan died, by the way. So what happened? Anyway, so the Revenant uh, was undocked and it was undocked for quite a while and it was just taking pot shots at things and being a little bit ballsy, you know, kind of sitting on the Keepstar, I'm safe. And what happened is that he got aggressed. He aggressed, he got baited to aggress. And then if I actually click on, uh, here we go, his kill mail, you will see that everyone in here is Goonswarm Federation, right? Let me just all pilots, there we go. But we go down the list and somewhere in here there is a devoter, here it is. Third Imposter Pandemic Horde. So a spy in Goonswarm, uh, sorry, a spy in Pandemic Horde from Goonswarm, uh, undocked um, after the bait and scrammed him and uh, basically put him in a situation where he couldn't dock any get. And if you look at Third Imposter, you can see right here, he actually created his account on the 26th of November. Uh, he joined Horde on the 27th <laughs> and on the uh, literally on the very same day and uh, then the skill injected into a uh, hick and uh, scrambled the uh, the revenant and at that point a dread bod came in and a dread bomb was I think 47 to 50 I don't have to come the exact number of dreads just, these were all suicide dreads they knew they weren't coming back they just dropped in and uh, in the time that it was taking to form, the Revenant died. And uh, this brings me back to the Leviathan. The Leviathan undocked all on its own. And uh, one, the problem with that was that he uh, clearly thought that he would be able to doomsday the, uh, all of these, um, these dreads. But if you can see down here, there's a bunch of apostles. Now, you'd be probably wondering, why are there apostles with uh, suicide dread bombs. It's like you can't rep the dreads whilst they're in uh, in siege. So why have you got them? These are newting apostles. They, they, they had newts on them. And so what happens is that the, the, the basically the Leviathan undocked, the, the Titan undocked. It got newted by the apostle. So it can't fire its doomsday. Uh, all its active uh, tank just went zoop and down and that's that. And then they picked it off as well. Uh, and then finally, uh, everything, all the other Titans undocked as a group and were able to then apply damage and then the, the uh, suicide uh, dreads died. So lessons to be learned there is that uh, just because you're in a Revenant and uh, just because you're elite does not mean you're going to die on your own Keepstar and uh, don't undock on your own against the suicide dreads with a bunch of apostles with them. So there you go. So that was kind of the big news this week and it was kind of a big, big... Uh, Kind of a morale boost obviously for uh, for the imperium and uh, lessons are there to be learned by the way if you enjoy my content then uh, please do subscribe to my channel it helps so much uh, please give me a like and you know give me a thumbs up all this kind of stuff uh, also check out my link below for discord uh, i really do appreciate people contacting me on discord and discussing this uh, some of the footage you just saw was actually supplied to me by somebody through my discord so please check that out i really appreciate it a lot right so moving on now, uh, one of the things I had noticed on my travels, let me go back to my map again, uh, I was down in uh, this light pink constellation in the bottom right, or the violet one, in WTAC-K, and I saw another uh, Goonswarm Keepstar unanchoring. And I've mentioned on this in the past that there was one in K-6 unanchoring. This is never happening. This is basically seems to be like a bait. Uh, they're just kind of trying to bait people to fight on a keep star. This is kind of Imperium's big goal, is that they want to have a super fight on a keep star where they have the advantage. And then the uh, Pappy side basically don't want to go there because they know that is going to hurt big time. So it looks like these, un these unanchorings are actually kind of fake news and uh, 
and just kind of a bait system uh, that isn't working so far. But hey, hey you saw a Revlon die on a cube star. Who knows what might happen? Anyway, so we now move into the weekend. And on the this weekend, uh, there was a, a lot of stuff happening on the iHubs, uh, particularly in this constellation right here, the, the uh, yellow one. Uh, so 4K TAC, QX TAC, etc., And then this gray one here, which is T5Z and DTACW. Those are kind of critical areas, which we'll come on to in a minute. But over in Quirius, uh, there was up here in, let me uh, go back to iHubs. You can see that this one here, W6V, is now a Goon Swarm iHub. And what happened was, that, as you can see, Brave has taken a lot of iHubs and they kind of overextended themselves. And when we come onto the Doom Clock a little bit later, this will make a lot more sense. But essentially, uh, I believe, uh, I haven't checked for myself, but I believe that um, Brave have a structure in here, a big structure. And they were almost at that 35 day mark uh, to be able to put in their Sinogem and potentially a jump bridge just somewhere else in the system. Literally a, a, a few days away, about a week away. But what they didn't do is they didn't basically push up their ADMs. So their ADM was really, really low. And as a consequence of that, uh, they got basically, goons came in force and uh, they uh, basically took the iHub away. And um, because it was happening in Quirus, it was a long way away from Delve. Uh, there was, there's obviously no jump gates uh, in Delve at the moment for, uh, for Pappy. And so a lot of stuff was burning and then having used to use a jump gate from 8QT to, I think it goes to either PTAC-Z or UY, UYU uh, in order to get in here. And uh, if we actually look at the battle report, this time round it was um, uh, Test who took all the damage. So you can see that uh, Team 1, which is um, the Imperium, lost uh, under a billion ISK. And then uh, you've got a $14 billion ISK uh, lost. And this was primarily to test, as you can see, all their bazzies went down and they lost a whole bunch of eagles. And hacks are not cheap, you know, and they, they certainly uh, paid the price for that. And so uh, this was a Munin fleet and a Naga fleet. And I think they had a Harpy fleet as well. Uh, this is the Imperium. Uh, yeah, so you can see they had a massive Harpy fleet that was basically harassing all the Intosis boats. And uh, Brave weren't able to support this and they, they called for help. They left it too late, it was too far away. Uh, and because of their ADMs were low, which we'll come back to in a minute, uh, they basically got blue balled and they lost the system. So uh, this I have is now re gonna have to be retaken and then reset and then you're looking at another potentially two months in all in total, probably before they can get back to the stage they were at. So they lost an opportunity here and this comes back to that complacency. That I assume they thought they were a long way away from the fighting, a long way away from 1DQ and T5Z. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> the, uh, the Imperium are very opportunistic and they saw an opportunity here, they took it and they did it very, very well. So, uh, that's kind of um, what happened with that. But, what we're going to talk about now is, is kind of the big news uh, and, and it's going to really shape the war. And this is the Doom Clock. So, this is the Doom Clock right here. And you can see, I'll put the link in the description, although you can probably see it at the top here. What is the Doom Clock? Well, the Doom Clock <clears throat> is every single system where there is a Imperium Keepstar where they do not own the iHub. And as I said before, with the strategic index reaches three, which takes 35 days, then you can put in a Sino Jammer. Now, if you remember, I think it wasn't last week, it was the week before. Uh, let me go back to my uh, iHubs. Uh, 49 TAC U, you will remember I mentioned how I was really surprised how the Imperium had let this iHub uh, reach strategic level three when there was a keep start here. And uh, they didn't fight over it. They, they reinforced it a couple of times, but they never fought over it. And eventually what happened was the Sino Jammer went in. The Sino Jammer was cycled down. A whole bunch of supers, um, a huge list of supers was jumped in uh, by Pappy and they killed the Keepstar and it was uncontested. Now, clearly Imperium learned their lesson here. They don't want it to happen again. And so we now have the Doom Clock. And what this is doing, this is providing real focus for the Imperium. They know exactly what they've got to do. So you can see that right now in six days time, there is a Keepstar in HIX4. If I can open that in these tabs, it'll take me to, no, it takes me to, it's Imperium basis. Uh, so if I, I'm trying to remember how to bring the map up now, it's this one, I think. 
There we go. So this one's in, in period basis. Uh, so if they don't take this, then potentially that keep start will die. Uh, but the more important one is probably null. This one has, has been used heavily by, um, by uh, the Imperium. There it is, that right there. And as you can see, it's owned by Northern Coalition. And so what's going to happen is if these flip over and these reach this kind of 35, let me go back to my doom clock. So in 18 days, uh, this will be uh, in a position where they could put a sign of jam out in and the keep start will probably die. And um, so these, all three of these uh, were actually, um, were in reinforced last night. That's as in the morning of uh, the 30th. And uh, all three of them were able to be held. So this kind of should be really driving um, the Imperium to, to really kind of push their act up and, and really fight over these hard. Because once these start going down, then that kind of really limits the ability for uh, the Imperium to change their mind and go, you know what, we are going to evac. You know, if, at the moment, as moment these, these exist, they have kind of roots out of Delph. <clears throat> once these start to go, once these are all gone, then they will be boxed in and, and nothing will be able to jump out. So this has kind of really set the uh, terms of the war. And if you remembered, uh, I didn't see 1DQ being attacked before Christmas. Well, you know, you can see here, all of these are probably going to be taken before that. So 34 days takes us into the beginning of January 2021. And that's on the basis that these don't get reinforced. If these, if these um, sorry, get flipped, then we reset the clock. So this is a big deal. And now we come on to ADMs. And so if we actually go back to our Delft map and uh, let's look at, let's say, DTACW. Uh, if we go to iHubs, you can see that that is owned by uh, PL, minus 10 right here. And we will then look at activity defense multipliers. And you can see it's at 3.1. Now, <clears throat> the others, like say, for example, 23G and JP4 underneath them, 1.6 and 1.6. So why does this matter? <clears throat> well, what it does is that it basically sets the length of timers that the, uh, the iHub is vulnerable for. So if we look at DTACW, you can see it's vulnerable currently from 17.05 to 2254. So PL are primarily a, an EU uh, uh, time zone. That is their strongest time zone. And so you can see well, that's why they started their time at 1705. But it's still going at the moment up to 11 o'clock at night, which is still not bad. It's a five hour window. Uh, but if you look at, if we go back, and if we look at, let's say, JP4, come on, JP4, there we go. And you can see this vulnerability window goes from two in the afternoon right up to 1.37 the next following morning. So that's an 11 hour window with an ABM of 1.6 versus a five, hour, five and a half hour window with an ADM of 3.1. And so what you're seeing now is you are seeing ratting, you are seeing mining happening in these systems. So, uh, you know, PL are out ratting uh, <laughs> and they're doing it in fleets. And they're doing this in order to be able to push up the ADM because whilst the strategic index will put it up, push it up, which is just a time based index, you've then got the military index and the industry index. The military index being driven by ratting, uh, the industry index being driven by uh, mining and also uh, industry activity. So in other words, having uh, sotillos and, and stuff like that and industry taking place. So, you know, things being manufactured. So that's kind of now where it's, it's flipped over. And this, this is where it gets really interesting because now the defenders are Pappy and the attacking force is, um, is, is the Imperium. So we kind of flipped everything on its head now that now the focus is on Pappy to try and secure these iHubs for 35 days to actually become, um, to, to actually use crabbing as a defensive technique uh, to basically do ratting, and they now have to protect things, whilst Goon Swarm are the ones that choose when to attack. And the thing you have to remember is that from an attacker's point of view, when you kind of got things like this where you're having to defend, um, the attackers can try as many times as they want. Literally every day they can try this. And they can choose the time at which they attack. Obviously the lower the ADM, the greater the choice in which they, they can attack. We've seen they can flash form and they can flash form faster than Pappy can. So this puts a lot of pressure on Pappy uh, to be able to flash form back to be able to protect these. So the longer these vulnerable windows are uh, and the more out of their kind of favorite time zone it goes, the weaker they are. So 
It's going to be really interesting to see uh, how successful uh, Pappy will be in, in, in defending these IHUBs because it's now clear that 1DQ and Helmsdeem will not be attacked until these structures uh, are taken down. These keep stars are taken down by putting in cyanide jammers. This seems to be the way it's going. I may be wrong, we shall see. But there you go. So hopefully that's brought you up to date. Hopefully that's given you some stuff to think about. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment. Please join my Discord too and let me know there. Once again, as I said during the middle of this video, please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, all that kind of good stuff. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week for more war updates. Bye.